Hey everyone, Rosen here. Today I want to talk about pattern matching in TypeScript, which has become an essential part of my daily workflow, both in React and Node.js. Personally, I haven't found a need for switch case statements. I can't even recall the last time I used one. In this video, I'll share practical pattern matching techniques that I rely on regularly. All the reusable code can be found in my GitHub repository, which I'll link in the description below. Often, when we reach for a switch case statement, our real goal is to run different logic depending on the value of a union type or an M. For example, in a music theory app, we need to generate different node patterns for different scale types. Each scale type, like blues, full, or pentatonic, has its own function that implements the specific logic for that scale. But all of these functions share the same input and output types, defined by the scale pattern resolver interface. By creating a record that maps each scale type to its corresponding resolver function, we can easily select and call the right function based on the scale type without needing a switch or if-else chain. If we ever introduce a new scale type but forget to add its resolver to this record, TypeScript will immediately flag the omission as an error. This safety net means we can confidently extend our code in the future, knowing that TypeScript will help us catch any missing cases during development. Most of the time, uh, the logic we need to run for each value of a union type or a num is simple enough that creating a separate function for every case would be overkill. In these situations, it's much easier to define small handlers for each value right where we need them. That's where the match function is especially useful. Now, for example, suppose we want to calculate a task's deadline timestamp based on its cadence. Here's another example that shows how pattern matching can streamline logic when working with multiple OAuth providers. Instead of relying on nested conditions, the match function lets us directly associate each provider with its specific logic for fetching user information. Google uses a GET request with an authorization header, while Facebook requires query parameters in the URL. This approach keeps the code organized and easy to extend. If we add a new provider to the OAuth provider type, TypeScript will prompt us to handle it in the match function, helping prevent overlooked cases and making future updates straightforward. At the heart of this approach is a simple yet powerful match function. This utility takes a value, such as string, number, or symbol, and a set of handlers for each possible value. It then calls the handler that matches the input returning its result. By using this function, we can replace verbose conditional logic with a concise type safe pattern that's easy to read and extend. While the match function works well for plain TypeScript logic, it's also possible to bring this pattern matching approach into React components. The match component provides a way to render different UI fragments based on a value using a prop driven pattern that closely mirrors the type safe logic of the utility function. By mapping each possible value to a render function, match makes it straightforward to conditionally display content in a declarative and maintainable way. For instance, let's say we need to display a different visual indicator depending on the current status of a task, a checkbox when it's completed, a spinner while it's active, and an empty placeholder when it's still pending. This approach makes it easy to see at a glance what stage each task is in using clear and distinct UI elements for each possible state. You can also create a custom pattern matching component tailored for handling the result of queries or mutations, something I often need when working with React Query. Typically, a query result might be pending, successful, or in an error state. And sometimes there is an inactive state, such as when a query is disabled based on certain conditions. The match query component lets you define handlers for each of these cases, allowing you to specify only the ones relevant to your situation and keep your UI logic clean and focused. Here's how match query helps manage different query states in the UI. It renders the scoreboard when the data is available, shows a spinner while the query is loading, and displays an error message if something goes wrong. This approach keeps the component focused and makes each state easy to handle and understand. A more interesting use case for pattern matching arises when we work with more complex data structures, such as a record union. For example, consider a shape type that can represent a circle, rectangle, or triangle. In this context, a record union refers to an object with a single key that uniquely identifies each variant. 
To work with record unions where each variant is a unique key, you can use a utility like match record union to dispatch logic based on that key. This avoids manual type checks on nested conditionals and ensures each handler receives a strongly typed argument for its variant. As a result, your code stays concise, type safe, and easy to extend. The implementation of match record union requires some TypeScript type gymnastics to properly infer and extract the types involved. It uses conditional types to first determine the keys of the union type, then extract the value associated with a specific key. At runtime, the function first extracts the key from the object and then calls the appropriate handler with the value associated with that key. Just as we transformed the match function into a React component earlier, we can similarly convert match record union into a component based version. The match and match record union utilities combined with the resolver's pattern discussed earlier address most real-world pattern matching scenarios in TypeScript. While these patterns handle the majority of use cases, you can adapt them for other type structures when needed. For instance, MitleKit also includes much discriminated union, which I reserve for working with external APIs that provide union structured as object with some case and value properties where a discriminant field identifies a type and a separate field holds the actual data. Despite having this option available, I typically favor record unions for their more compact representation. Let me also introduce a small but useful utility function that complements our pattern matching approach. When working with pattern matching, we often need to verify if a string value is one of the possible values in a union type before proceeding with the match operation. This example demonstrates why is one of is essential for type safe pattern matching with external data. The function returns a boolean indicating if the item exists in the array, but crucially, the item is t returns type is a TypeScript type predicate that narrows the type when used in conditionals. In our email provider example, once is one of confirms the extracted provider is valid. TypeScript treats it as a member of our const array, ensuring the subsequent match call only receives values it can properly handle and preventing compiler errors from unhandled cases. That's it for today's deep dive into pattern matching in TypeScript. I hope these techniques help you write cleaner, more maintainable code with better type safety. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more TypeScript and web development content. Drop your questions in the comments below and let me know what other TypeScript features you would like me to cover in the future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.